mantises are kind of scary looking insects to begin with, with their long, spiky looking front legs. But this particular one is like the kind of thing horror movies are made out of. This guy weighs 1,200 pounds and he's 18 feet long. And he's been created by David Rogers, who carves large insects for displays in parks and museums. The praying mantis is an incredibly unique insect. All insects have six legs, but two of the praying mantis legs aren't legs. They're shaped into almost like arms with all these spikes that can grab and hold the insects that it grabs in order to eat. The praying mantis can sit for minutes or even hours motionless waiting for the prey to come along and then it will rapidly reach out and grab it and the little spikes will hold it in place while it will then eat that insect. And that's how it survives. How do you take a leg and turn that leg into an arm? It could never happen in a slow, one step at a time gradual process. It had to have been designed with those legs to function and work and the instincts of how to use it. And that's where they came from. God made this insect this way. But the other amazing thing about a praying mantis is its hearing system that no other insect that we know of has. For decades, it was believed the praying mantis had no sense of hearing because there are no membranes on its head, nothing that seems to allow sound to reverberate and send a signal to the brain. Well, in the 1980s, uh, a researcher named David Yeager, uh, he discovered that underneath the neck area, the thorax of this praying mantis, there's a membrane with an air sac behind it that when it moves, it moves the air inside of that throat area. Dr. Yeager found out that flying mantises can hear in the ultrasonic range. Why is that important? Because one of the predators of a praying mantis is a bat. But the praying mantis, when it hears that ultrasonic chirp, it will take evasive action while it's flying. It will immediately pull up to a stall, turn sideways, and do a power dive toward the ground. And David Yeager tested this with ultrasonic chirps when there wasn't even a bat in the room and the praying mantises would react this way. That often allows it to lose the trailing bat that's trying to eat it. Now, how did this praying mantis develop that ability? You see, there's no other insect ancestor that has anything like this sound detecting structure on its body. It's just suddenly there. See, the genetic gene that would be required with all the information to create this sound sensing membrane on the thorax of this insect would be like an entire book of information in a library of information. The library is all the information needed to build the whole insect. The book would be the information needed to build this sound sensing system. Now, a book just doesn't just appear in a library and it doesn't appear by small step changes everything has to be there or nothing works to detect sounds. So these are the kind of things when we study insects and animals in the biological world that help us to know God is the one who made it all.